Welcome to the Hello Landia News Summary. Over the past week, Poland has continued to experience a spike in reported COVID-19 case numbers, with over 17,000 new cases being reported on Wednesday. Despite the recent tightening of some restrictions and the reimposition of a near total lockdown in the Varmian Mazurian Voivodeship, our province. Mienza Narodowe Gen Kobiet, our International Women's Day, was celebrated on Monday, but in Poland it's an occasion with some sharp political overtones, especially this year in the context of the strike Kobiet and the ongoing conflict over abortion rights versus the right to life. The main news stories over the past week have included Poland reports over 17,000 new daily COVID-19 cases on Wednesday as the third wave of infections escalates. A Polish diplomat is expelled from neighbouring Belarus for taking part in a commemorative event for the Żołnierze Wietlenski, Polish anti-communist resistance fighters. Pekka N. Orlen sources 1 million tonnes of crude from the US as part of moves to diversify energy supplies and reduce dependence on Russia. And President Duda extends thanks to the nation's women on the occasion of International Women's Day on Monday. The recent spike in COVID-19 cases seen in Poland has escalated over the past week. On Wednesday, officials reported the further 17,260 new cases and 398 deaths. Wednesday's new case figure was the highest reported so far this year, albeit still well below figures seen last year. The highest number of new cases reported in Poland to date was 27,875 on November 7th. Of the 398 new deaths reported on Wednesday, 309 were said to be of people with serious pre-existing medical conditions, while 89 were directly attributed to COVID-19. On Monday, Poland had reported 6,170 new cases and 32 deaths, and on Tuesday, 9,954 new infections and 282 deaths. Poland's strictest regional lockdown remains in force in the northeastern Varmian Marjurian Voivodeship, where shopping malls, cinemas and other cultural institutions have been closed and all schooling has returned to online classes since the 27th of February. Wednesday's figures brought the total number of reported cases since the outbreak began a year ago to 1.83 million and the number of deaths to just under 46,000. Also on Wednesday, officials said that to date 4.09 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered to date. This included over 2.64 million people who've received the first dose, with just under 1.45 million having received the second shot. On Tuesday, Marcin Szydzac, an Under Secretary of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, warned that Poland will respond promptly and adequately to what he termed the unjustified decision by Belarus to expel a Polish diplomat from the country. The diplomat, based in the Polish Consulate General in Brest, in the southwest of Belarus, very close to the border with Poland, was ordered to leave the country after taking part in an event to honour the Żołnierze Wietlenski, Poland's anti-communist resistance fighters who fought on after the end of the Second World War. Szydzac told reporters that the expulsion placed an added burden on the difficult relations between the two countries. Relations were already badly strained by Poland's strong support of the democratic opposition to the regime of President Alexander Lukashenko in Belarus. Commenting on Tuesday, Szydzac said that we appeal to the authorities in Minsk to engage in dialogue with its people, free political prisoners and restore basic civil liberties. On Tuesday, Pekka N. Arlen the state-owned oil refiner and petrol retailer headquartered in Płotsk, announced that it had reached what had termed an unprecedented deal with US oil giant ExxonMobil for the purchase of 1 million tonnes of crude. The state-owned company's president, Daniel Obitek, 
commented that, for the first time ever, Pekka and Ireland has concluded a long-term contract for the supply of crude oil from the US. Obitech added that the agreement with ExxonMobil provides for a total of around 1 million tonnes of crude for our refineries in Poland, the Czech Republic and Lithuania over a year. We are continuing to diversify our supply sources. The move forms part of Poland's efforts to diversify its energy supply away from what has been perceived as over-dependence on Russia. The PKN Ireland Group itself currently buys its crude oil under long-term contracts with suppliers in Russia and Saudi Arabia. Meanwhile, on the issue of the Nord Stream 2 natural gas pipeline, which Poland has strenuously opposed, a group of five US Republican lawmakers have written to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, stating their view that, quote, We are deeply concerned that the administration's strong statements in opposition to the pipeline are not being matched by equally strong actions. Speaking on Tuesday, Democratic Senator Bob Menendez, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, referring to the Biden administration, said that, I think they are engaged in a full diplomatic push to stop Nord Stream 2. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has previously termed Nord Stream 2 as a new hybrid weapon aimed at the European Union and NATO. Suspended judge Igor Tuleya, a fierce critic of the Polish government's judicial reforms, on Monday launched a legal action to be allowed to return to work after an appeal court had earlier overturned his suspension last November. The Warszawa District Court had nevertheless refused to allow him to return to work. Tulea said he'd take his case to the European Court of Justice if it fails in the domestic courts. Tulea has been accused by government supporters of being a symbol of judges who view themselves as above the law as set in accordance with the Polish Constitution and who are causing chaos in the country's legal system. Last weekend, construction got underway on a major transport infrastructure project in northwestern Poland, which includes an underground road tunnel that will replace a ferry link in the port and resort town of Sinaustia, near the city of Szczecin, that has been a major traffic bottleneck. Sinaustia Mayor Janusz Szmurkiewicz commented that a final 18 months of hard work lies ahead of us. Only 18 months. How little, considering that we have waited for this moment for many, many years now. One of the top tourist attractions in the Tri-Cities, the decommissioned Polish naval vessel, ORP Błaskowicka, normally moored at anchor in Gdynia, is in need of a complete overhaul. It's been moved to a shipyard for repair work and won't be open to the public for at least the next 90 days. On Tuesday, the 85-year-old vessel was moved by three tugboats to a dry dock in the Peja Z naval shipyard. The ship's second-in-command said that we would like to have the decks tested and repaired. The same goes with the sheeting, ballast tanks and masts. The last major overhaul on the vessel was undertaken in 2014. She is the second of two Grom-class destroyers built for the Polish Navy in 1935-1937 and the now museum ship is the oldest preserved destroyer in the world. Last Monday, March 8, marked International Women's Day, Mienza Narodowe Gen Kobiet, and was celebrated in Poland as in many other countries. While the day attracted particular significance during the communist era, and suffered a relative decline in popularity thereafter, with official celebrations being abandoned in 1993. It has attracted more attention in Poland in recent years, in particular becoming a focus for feminist groups. This year, demonstrations took place in several cities all over the country, including Warszawa, which were given added impetus by last October's Constitutional Tribunal ruling, which further restricted the legal grounds for abortion in Poland. In a video message, President Andrzej Duda extended congratulations to Polish women and said that, quote, at this time of coronavirus pandemic, 
I especially address those of our ladies who are directly involved in the fight against this top global threat. Duda added that, in this difficult time, we realise more than ever just how important the role of women is in every area of our life. Many Polish women, and indeed hopefully many of our listeners in Ireland, received flowers on the day. That's all for this week.